In this video lecture, we're going to learn about the charges on ions uh, and uh, briefly uh, introduce ions again. Uh, ions were formed if an atom lost electrons or if an atom gained electrons. So, if an atom lost electron, loses electrons, it uh, forms a positive ion. If it loses one electron, it will have a net positive charge of plus one. If it loses two electrons, it will have a net positive charge of plus two and so on. And similarly, if an atom gains electrons, and negative ions are negative ions are formed because now it has more electrons, it has more negative charge. So the net uh, negative charge would be on the ion. So if an atom gains one electron, it's going to have a minus one charge. If an atom gains two electrons, it will have a net negative charge of minus two. Now you're already familiar with uh, which elements lose how many electrons. So starting with group one. So I have group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4 and group 0 and they are transition elements between group 2 and group 3 so we're going to ignore that for now. Uh, group 1, remember uh, group 1 elements have one outer shell electrons, one valence electrons and they always lose one electron so group 1 elements generally have a charge of plus 1. Similarly group 2 elements when they form ions they will form uh, an ion of plus two charge because they're always losing two electrons because they have two outer shell electrons and they lose those two electrons uh, in a similar way group three they are metals and uh, they also lose electrons and they will have a net positive charge of plus three when they form ion when they lose electrons because they have three outer shell electrons group four could be plus four it could also be minus four generally they don't they're not uh, they're not uh, uh, involved in ion formation that much uh, moving to group five now if you look at group five group five has elements have uh, five electrons in the outer shell so to complete the outer shell they gain three electrons when they gain three electrons they form a negative ion having a charge of minus three and then group six have six outer shell electrons and to complete the outer shell they gain two electrons which is why they have a net uh, negative charge of minus two and group seven is going to have uh, when they form ions they're going to have a net negative charge of minus one uh, because group seven have seven outer shell electrons and they gain one electron to complete the outer shell then finally you have group zero or noble gases and they have complete outer shells they're not uh, involved in ion formation so generally their charges are zero so these charges, you must be familiar with these charges, whenever you're, whenever you're forming ionic compounds, you can, you can figure out the charge on the ion by looking at which uh, group the element belongs to. For example, if you have sodium, you would know sodium belongs to group 1, so it will have a plus 1 charge in its compound. If you look at aluminium, aluminium is in group 3, it generally has a charge of plus 3. If you look at barium, barium is in group 2, it will have a charge of plus 2. Similarly, if, you ha if you're talking about oxygen, uh, the ox oxide ion, then uh, you would know that oxygen is in group 6, so group 6 will have a minus 2 charge, so oxygen is going to have a minus 2 charge, and in a similar way if you have iodine, iodine is in group 7, so it's probably going to have a charge of minus 1. After that, we, we also have transition metals. They are present between group 2 and group 3 in the periodic table. Now, transition metals can lose uh, more than, uh, they can lose a variable number of electrons. For example, iron could have a charge of, uh, it could have a 2 plus charge, it could also have a 3 plus charge, sometimes it also has a 5 plus charge. Uh, manganese can have a 2 plus charge, it could also have a charge of plus uh, 7. So their charges are variable, so they have variable charges. So they have variable charges. So their charges, whenever the, uh, a compound containing transition metals is mentioned, then the charge would also be mentioned. For example, if somebody uh, writes iron sulfate, then you have to write whether it's iron 2 sulfate. This would indicate that iron has a plus two charge uh it has a plus two charge this two over here indicates that iron is having a plus two charge if you have uh, iron three sulfate then the name would mention the charge so it's going to be iron three sulfate this would indicate that iron has a charge of plus three so for transition metals you can't really predict what the charge is going to be by looking at the periodic table so so the charge on the iron would always be mentioned somewhere Without this, you can't really form a formula containing a transition metal. We're now going to look at other ions which are called polyatomic ions. 
these are basically molecules uh, that don't have a complete outer shell. They're molecules uh, consisting of sev uh, several different uh, non-metals combined together, but the outer shells are not complete. So to get into a stable configuration, they either gain or lose electrons to get into a stable configuration. So they're molecules that gain or lose electrons, and therefore they have a net positive or negative charge depending on the number of electrons they've either gained or lost. So, for example, uh, one important thing about polyatomic ions is that you have to remember this entire list. You need to know the formula of the ions as well as the name of the ions. So, the first one is a hydroxide ion, which is OH, and it has a net negative charge of minus 1. Remember, this minus 1 charge is not only on the hydrogen atom over here, but it's on the entire OH uh, molecule. So, it's, uh, it's, uh, this negative charge is over the entire entire polyatomic ion not just on the hydrogen so the second one is nitrate which is NO3 1 minus and again it's uh, this 1 minus charge is not on the oxygen it's on the entire nitrate ion then you have sulfate which is SO4 2 minus carbonate which is CO3 2 minus ammonium which is NH4 and it has a charge of 1 plus phosphate which is PO4 and it has a net negative charge of minus 3 then you have uh, these less common ions uh, you have nitrite. Remember the difference between an 8, a nitrate and a nitrite. Nitrite is NO2 1 minus compared to a nitrate which is NO3 1 minus. Similarly, you have sulfide and you compare it with sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus, sulfide is SO3 2 minus. The entire polyatomic ion has one oxygen less. Uh, then you have phosphide and again compare this with uh, phosphate which is PO4 3 minus. Phosphide, on the other hand, is PO3, 3 minus. Then you have cyanide ion, which is CN1 minus, hydrogen carbonate ion, which is HCO3, 1 minus. And then you have chromate 6 ion, which is CRO4, which with this is chromium, CRO4, and it has a net negative charge of minus 2. Uh, dichromate ion is Cr2O7, and it has a net negative charge of minus 2. Per magnet is MnO4, minus 1. Now, these list of ions are very important. You would be able to make an equation if you don't remember this entire list of polyatomic ions by heart. So you need to memorize this entire section and you must know whenever uh, something comes up, whenever a nitrate is heard or a sulfate or a carbonate or a phosphide, you must know what the formula of that particular polyatomic ion is. I'm now going to try and explain to you the structure of uh, one of the polyatomic ions just to clarify what polyatomic ions really are. So I'm going to pick hydroxide ion over here which is uh, an oxygen bonded covalently with a hydrogen but it has also gained one electron which is why it's getting a negative charge. So quickly explaining what a hydroxide is going to look like. I'm going to have, a, have an oxygen atom covalently bonded to a hydrogen atom. Remember hydrogen just has one electron so when they're sharing electrons hydrogen can only share one electron and oxygen would share one electron with that. Now oxygen has is in group 6 which means that it has 6 electrons in its outer shell and it is right now sharing one electron with the hydrogen over here so it's going to have 5 electrons remaining in the outer shell. So the 5 electrons remaining in the outer shell now hydrogen's sharing is complete. Now if you look at the outer shell of hydrogen it has 2 electrons one coming from oxygen but if you look at oxygen's outer shell, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 electrons. It still needs one electron to complete its outer shell. Now this is where uh, this molecule would start uh, to gain or lose electrons. Uh, so oxygen needs one more electron to complete its outer shell. So just like in an ionic compound, it might gain that one electron from some other atom roaming around. So if it gains uh, one electron instead of sharing one electron it gains one electron in that manner its outer shell would be complete and it is this way that, that oxygen and hydrogen when they're bonded, bonded together in this manner they're going to have a net charge of minus one because the entire molecule has actually ended up gaining one electron from outside to complete the outer shell